uh, focusing on in on your 20s, with the benefit of hindsight now, mm. when you think about how you played your 20s and how you'd suggest that maybe a child you have someday or a friend that is 20 years old should play their 20s, what is the best advice for a 20-year-old? The best advice for a 20-year-old is to realize that your 20s do suck, that you are probably drinking too much, you're hanging out with people that aren't the best versions of themselves, neither are you. You've got crazy hormones going on. You're going to bars and hanging out with people, having a few too many drinks, and then going to a job you kind of hate because you're brand new into the workforce. And so, of course, you're doing the worst thing humanly possible. And that's going to continue for like five to 10 years. Like you are going to do a $65,000 a year job for two or three years and it sucks. And you're going to have no time for anything except what your boss asks of you. And I wish people had told me that because if you see the light at the end of the tunnel, you're like, oh, okay, like I can do this for two or three years. I can learn, I can grow and I can suck it up for two to three years. And then after that, I get a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. Um, and so the advice would be when you have a foot in your nail, which is what it's like when you start your first job being 20, don't you know, try to ignore the fact that it's painful. It's there. Like it's there. It's real. It sucks. And I wish somebody had told me that because these days everybody's like, no, oh, you can be a 20 year old and drive a Bugatti and, you know, I don't know, play around with crypto. Not real, not real. And then once I learned like, okay, this sucks and I can deal with it. Then the next thing would be everybody focuses on how much money you make when you're in your twenties. Huge mistake. The only thing you should focus on is learning. How can I think about my salary like putting pieces of cash into my brain? How can I learn as much as possible? How can I come and work an apprentice for somebody that I think I might want their life one day? And I'll take the minimum amount of cash that I need in order to fill my brain so that my next step can be to make more money. But in the beginning, too many people obsess on money and I wish I hadn't thought that way. I would rather learn than earn when I'm young. Do you think there's a different amount of work and work ethic required in different seasons of life. So in your 20s, should you be working harder than when you're, say, 30, 40, 50? 100%. You can't have the same stab stamina. I mean, I, you know, I was weightlifting the other day and I was showing my less strong friend next to me, like, this is how you do a deadlift. And here's what, and I put another plate on there and the, you know, blew up my hip, you know, and I'm like, now I'm in like back pain and, you know, I'm 37. I, can't, I do not have the same stamina I had when I was 25. Physically, you decline mentally you decline. And I think your work ethic declines too. And so, you know, you, it's really hard to keep going for 20 years at 12 hour long days. You can do it, but it's much easier when you're 20. And so if you know that, then no, let's front load the pain so that in my 30s, we can have a lot of fun. You know, my husband who you, who you met is former Navy SEAL. And we always talk about how I think the only reason we're kind of successful is we just said, what are the worst jobs we can take when we're young, where we can learn the most? We can hopefully, I think, have something that's a resume builder. And then once we're in our mid 20s to late 20s, we can start reaping the fruits of our labor. But, you know, being a Navy SEAL sucks. You do it when you're young, you do all the worst things when you're young, but then for the rest of your life, you're a fucking former Navy SEAL. You're set because you front loaded the pain. When you look back over your career, do you, um, can you, identify any sort of light bulb moments where you were exposed to information that caused a bit of a paradigm shift as as it relates to how you think about wealth because i i had a, i've had a couple of moments and you know to varying degrees but some real standout moments where i saw someone operate i was exposed to how they made their money and how they built their wealth and i thought fuck nobody told me this and i had the game wrong yeah has there been those moments in your life for sure. Um, I think the, well, there's, there's actually uh, studies showing something called economic interconnectedness, which basically shows that say you have a poor neighborhood to the left and a poor neighborhood to the right, same uh, socioeconomic status. So they both make them around the same amount of money. If this neighborhood just has a few rich people in it, even though on average, the neighborhoods are the same and people in the poor neighborhood interact with rich people a little bit more on the left than they do on the right, if you go 30 years down the line, the kids that just had a few more interactions with rich people are going to be richer on average by 35% than the people in the same neighborhood to the right, except with less economic interconnectedness. And so what that tells me is as often as possible, you want to be around people who are richer than you. Sounds obvious, kind of, but I don't think it's that obvious. You don't have to live next to them. You don't have to have their money. You just want to be around them because it is contagious in some ways. Ideas are contagious. And this ability to see 
into the future, I think is contagious. You know, if you think about it like you're driving in a car, the faster the car is going, the farther the headlights have to be able to peer into the future. Otherwise, you're going to, to blow off a cliff. And so I think when people are moving really fast, they have a lot of money and they have big risk to the things they do, they, their headlights are just a little bit farther than the rest of us. And so I got really lucky because I chose finance. Finance is full of people who are obsessed with money. I think there's a lot of, you know, ethical issues in that industry, but all around me were rich people. So I remember one instance uh, really, really well. And that was, um, I, was in, I was in Chicago at the time. I was working at Goldman Sachs and um, the head of the Chicago office was a guy by the name of Bruce. And um, Bruce was a good guy. He ran the fixed income division. And after I left Goldman Sachs, I kind of stay in touch with a few people there, including Bruce. Well, one day I find out Bruce becomes the ambassador to Canada. I was like, Canada? I don't even know if Bruce had been to Canada. Like, he's not a special... How did that happen? And so I started talking to a few other people and I realized, oh, you buy ambassadorships in the U.S. And so you could Google right now and see what the average ambassadorship in the U.S. costs. The answer is about a million dollars directly donated to a president plus a couple million dollars donated in a pack. So Bruce bought the ambassadorship which I thought was fascinating. And I was like, shit, I didn't realize that was for sale. Like, that's it. You just buy those things? That's so bizarre. And that flipped my perspective entirely to realize, oh man, money really just is power. And can you imagine how wide open your ability must be for abundance if you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to buy a position of authority in the world. Never even would enter my equation. When a lot of people think about money and they hear conversations about wealth, I think some people kind of cringe because they think yeah. of money as being quite an ugly thing. Uh -huh. and, and some people think it's quite an evil thing. The, the desire to accumulate more of it, they see as being, I don't know, selfish or some maybe even manipulative or I don't know. You know so how, how do you square that for those people? I, I mean, first of all, I would just say you're never going to attract it if you don't like it. If you think it's evil, you're certainly not going to make much of it. And that sounds touchy-feely, and I'm from Austin, and I kind of like crystals, so maybe that mm -hmm. is a little touchy-feely, but th it's the truth of the matter. It's just like women these days who say, all men are bad. I can't find a man. I don't like men anywhere. Do you think you're going to find one that way? You know, if you say things like that, are you going to be in partnership? Of course not. You're going to repel them because you don't even like them. It's the same thing with money. It's very common sense when you think about it. And so I always like to think about money as it's just that it's that tool in your toolbox. It's like, so do I want somebody else to have the chainsaw or do I want it? Well, I'd, I'd rather have it because I think I'm a good person and I think that I could help more people with it. And so people really need to lose the emotional attachment to money, especially if it's negative. Um, I think there's a lot bigger issue with too many people thinking money is bad than too many people thinking money is good. And that's weird if you think about it, because the opposite is usually what we're told, right? 